members, <coughs> members, the questioners of the report of the Health Committee on the 2008-09 Financial Review of Mid Central District Health Board be noted. Those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no, the ayes have it. The next entity I understand <coughs> members wish to debate is ACC. The question is that the report of the Transport and Industrial Relations Committee on the 2008-09 Financial Review of ACC be noted. Mr. The Honourable David Parker. Thank you, Mr Chairman. At the time of this debate last year, the Government was trying to convince New Zealanders that ACC was fundamentally broken. They were exaggerating the problems that ACC had so as to try and justify the f very fundamental and negative changes that the Government wants to make to the structure of ACC, including privatising some of its public functions. How did they go about it? Well, a year ago they were saying that its liabilities were out of control. Uh, they uh, had some uh, bad luck, I have to admit, uh, uh, occasioned by the international financial crisis decreasing the rate of return on investments. If you have a lower rate of return on investments and you're reliant on a pool of investments to fund the long-term costs of claims, someone who might be a tetraplegic and on the scheme for decades, then of course you need a bigger pool of investments in order to meet that future cost. So the increase in their, in their, in their liabilities, which is how they express that number, uh, uh, was used as an excuse by the government to claim that ACC was fundamentally broken. They revalued the long-term cost of care by making some very negative assumptions as to the rate at which uh, accident claims, uh, claims on the scheme would be made, uh, and uh, they refused to do what everyone in this House knew needed to be done, which was to extend the date for fully funding of old claims. By that I mean that uh, progressively over time the scheme is moving towards having enough money in its accounts to fund the whole of life costs of existing claims rather than paying it on a pay-as-you-go basis every year. The Labor, government, uh, the Labor Party had uh, campaigned on putting out that date for full funding from 2014 to 2018, I think it was, it might have been 19. Uh, and the national government knew that needed to be done but refused to do so until doing so under the cover of their legislation at the uh, start of this year, I think it was, finally, um, when they should have done it earlier. Now, here we are a year later, and uh, the government, uh, through the minister, Nick Smith, at Select Committee, came along and he said a few things. He said, there's been huge progress made over the last year. Those were his words. Huge progress, huge progress. So much so that ACC is now in a stable financial position and expected to make a $2 billion surplus this year. $2 billion surplus, some of which comes from increases in rates of return on their investments, but some of which is an operating profit, i.e. they are now collecting more in levies than is the cost of the whole of life cost of the claims this year. What a remarkable change we're asked to believe. What a remarkable change. But the truth is, the truth is, they were exaggerating the problems at ACC in the first place, and they've been caught out. They've been caught out. And the problem for the government is having been caught out, how do they justify the substantial changes they want to make to the scheme? They want to privatise what is currently a public scheme. Why? Why? We have to ask ourselves in this House, why do they want to do that? Well, it's not because it costs too much. Even the Treasury report to the Minister of Finance last year said, and I quote from this, it's not clear that levies are excessive. Now, we'd all like levies to be lower, and maybe they were pushed up too much last year because they've certainly had a surplus. They didn't need all of that levy increase. But the Treasury's right. It's not clear that levies are excessive. We know that because at the Select Committee last year, because of the Labor Party inquiries, we actually had some cost comparisons with Australia. And there is nowhere cheaper in terms of total levies. In addition to that, we know that with the state-run monopoly, which doesn't have to make a profit on capital, it just has to cover its costs, doesn't have to return a profit to its shareholders, we know that the administration costs of ACC are the lowest of any scheme in the world. There are none lower. That's been proven 
by the PricewaterhouseCoopers study that was done out of PricewaterhouseCoopers in Australia a couple of years ago. So it's already cheaper. We know it's comprehensive. We know that the no-fault principles that lie under the scheme mean that we don't waste money on insurance company margins, on lawyers' bills, fighting over liability issues. Actually, the money goes into rehabilitation and care and income-related compensation. So where is the case for privatisation? It's not there. It's not there. But this is ideology that is driving the government. It is not reason. It is ideology. Now, what's the latest thing we've heard, Mr Chair? Mr Chair? Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Well, the, the latest thing that we've heard in the last week is, comes from the government's appointee as chair of ACC, John Judge. And what's he said in the last week? He said that we should actually be having financial penalties for doctors who have been involved in treatment that has led to ACC payments because the treatment didn't go properly. Doesn't that sound remarkably like moving in the direction of the American system, which is not only litigious, wasting all this money on litigation, which ACC actually avoids in the New Zealand system, it's one of the real attributes, but more importantly perhaps, we know what happens in the United States. The United States spends twice as much per head of per, uh, as a percentage of GDP on health care in America as we do in New Zealand, but they live shorter lives. That's because they waste money in their health system because they have such a defensive method of medical practice that they don't take any risks. They don't take any risks for fear of being sued, for fear of the personal consequences to them as doctors and nurses, and as a consequence, they waste a lot of money. And what does that mean? It means that instead of two people getting a hip operation, you can only afford to give it to one person. And that's why, you know, in simplistic terms, despite spending twice as much in New Zealand in the medical system, they've actually got a lower life expectancy than we have here, and they don't do things like spend money on prevention. And that's another thing that's gone wrong in the last year. The ACC board cut their accident prevention plans. They cut the, the Otago Medical School designed falls prevention program that delivers services to people who are over 80 years of old who have always already had a fall and we know statistically they're at risk of having another one. You can reduce that risk and therefore reduce the risk that they'll break a hip and have to get a hip fixed and the cost of that. And what happened? What, what happened? They cut it. And you know how much it was saving? Do you know how much it was saving? He says it wasn't saving anything. Well, Mr Woodhouse, there was peer review study to show that for every dollar that was spent, $2 was saved in the first year following the intervention. You know why ACC cut it? Because only 70% of that $2 cost was on their books, and the rest was a cost to the health system. So this government that can't have one hand talking to the other cut a program that saved taxpayers $2 for every dollar that was spent because only 70 cents of it was saved in the ACC system. This area of policy is being grossly mismanaged, grossly mismanaged. I have a real fear that the government's still going to push ahead with not just privatising some of the management functions, some of the operational functions when it comes to managing claims, but they're, they're going to have a tilt at privatising levy setting and underwriting, and there is no justification for it. It is not evidence-based. The Minister, Nick Smith, was caught out Select Committee last year. He said his justification was that some of the self-employers, the big employers, have better rates of rehabilitation. He said that. So we went to the Accident Compensation Corporation under the Official Information Act and said, we're very interested in this. Please show us the information. They flicked it to the Minister's office because there was none. And the Minister didn't have any either. All he could produce was a press release from one of the private providers saying we do it well. There is absolutely no evidence that the self-insured pool, which does contract out the management of claims to private providers, does it any cheaper or, or, any, or, 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 any, or any, more, any more higher rates of rehabilitation. They stay in the program, uh, Mr Woodhouse, because they actually, they actually contract out of the averaging of levies. That's why they stay into it. It's not because they have better rates of rehabilitation. It's because they... Well, there is no evidence for that, Mr Woodhouse, and we have made inquiries on that. That is a mere assertion by you, and your government should be ashamed that they, they, are, willing to, willing to, they are willing to act on assertion rather than evidence-based when we know that we 